Hello guys, welcome back to my channel or if you're new, welcome. My name is Monica and today I'm doing the 21 questions makeup tag. This tag was created by Allie Glines here on YouTube. I will have her original video and her channel linked in the description box down below along with all 21 of the questions. I think this is going to be a little bit of a longer tag since there are so many questions but also I just love the questions they're gonna really make me like go back and think because they really do they deal a lot with like your history with makeup and like some of the first products you ever use the oldest products in your collection so it's gonna take a little bit uh feel free to listen to this like a podcast put me on 1.75 speed get comfy get a snack and let's jump in Question number one is, what is the oldest makeup product in your collection? For this, I have a tie, because like to be quite honest, I don't know which one I got first. Uh, the first is this old as hell Lancome eyeliner, and I'm wearing it today. I've had this for years. This was either given to me or I bought, I think I might have bought it one of the first times I ever went to Sephora, and that would have been in 2013, 2014. So, ooh, long. Um, I think it's fine, because as long as you sharpen it, you can like... I mean, as far as I'm aware, it's fine, <laughs> as long as I keep sharpening it. I um, mean, this thing was a big pencil. I think it came out to here, and now it's all the way down to here. Um, it's an awesome black eyeliner, to be honest. It lasts in my waterline just about a whole day, and it's, it's lasted. <laughs> The other older product in my collection, I actually had to go back because I posted this on Instagram like the day that I got it because it was one of the first higher end like palettes that I was ever able to actually get. And this is the Urban Decay Naked 2 palette. I've had this since 2015. <laughs> Ooh, it's 2021. <laughs> it's old. Um, but I, I've wanted this palette for so long. It was my first... Ooh. <gasps> and a bunch of the shades just popped out. Ooh, that's new. Oh, all right, well that's new. <laughs> so I am not gonna hold this up all the way so they don't fall out again. I guess the glue actually like literally just came undone from the back of the actual shades. But this is the palette. I've wanted it for the longest time. I loved the shades in here. And this was back when I was like first watching YouTube and everyone was using this for tutorials and it was talking about the original Naked and then the Naked 2 palette. So I wanted this for the longest time and then I finally got it and I think the first few tutorials I remember looking up on YouTube and on Pinterest back when I used to like, I used to really get into makeup Pinterest as well, um, really use this palette. And so this is like so nostalgic for me. I go back and I use it every now and then. And as far as I'm aware, other than the fact that all those shades just fell out, the shades themselves are still fine. I might just have to re-glue those into the palette so they don't pop out again. But it's, as far as I'm aware, it's not expired or anything, but it's very, very nostalgic. Question number two is, what is your most recent makeup purchase? So I've got two products right here. We literally went to Target a couple of days ago just to pick up a couple of things, some groceries and a toaster. I've, I got a toaster. I'm so excited for my new toaster. <laughs> anyway, I just picked up two products real quick. The first one is the Maybelline Fit Me Matte and Poreless Foundation. I love this foundation. It's one of my go-to summer foundations, and I always pick one up every summer. And I hadn't had one, and it's starting to get disgustingly hot outside. Like today, I took Rex for a walk and we went half a block and then he gave up and wouldn't go any further. It's just hot. It's hot. <laughs> so this is one of my go-to summer foundations. If you guys want to see like a summer foundation video, let me know. Because um, most of my go-tos are from the drugstore, which is awesome. Um, but this is great. I love it. I get it. And I think this is the lightest shade. It's shade 102, which is a pretty good shade match for me now that I'm pale as hell. Um, but I love it. And so I picked this up. The other product I picked up just because I saw it at the Target and I was like, ooh, I want another one. Um, so this is the next next so this is the nyx epic wear liner stick and i got the pink shade if you've been watching my channel the last couple of weeks you'll know i've become obsessed with these liners from nyx they're just the best colorful liners for your waterline i got them in like six different colors and i saw pink at the store and i was like i want this i'm getting it i have to get pink so i got pink question number three is what is the first makeup product you ever used so if we're talking ever ever i remember being like 13 and hanging out with my friends like at a sleepover and this was like peak emo time and so everyone was wearing black eyeliner and we all wanted to wear black eyeliner and we had just like a big pencil eyeliner that my best friend or her mom had and we were all putting eyeliner on each other and it was, I remember it was the first time I ever wore eyeliner in my waterline and do you remember how weird it felt the first time you put uh, liner either here or like tight line tight lining felt so odd the first few times I did it to the point where like my best friend had to like hold my eye open and do it for me because I couldn't do my own eyeliner <laughs> um, but that was the first time that I wore makeup and it was just really thick very black eyeliner 
Question number four is, what is a makeup trend that you used to love but you now hate? And I think it's probably like the all over color correcting. Because back when I first started like seriously getting into makeup, color correcting was all the rage. I remember buying a big color correcting like palette, I think from like Tarte. Um, and it was like, you would use different colors everywhere. And so you would have like your primer down and then you would just do like a full layer of color correcting and then you would go in with your foundation. And at first I loved it because I, I struggle with redness all over my cheeks. And so I would have green slathered all over there to cover that up. And then I would do salmon under my eyes because I had really bad bags under my eyes. Still do to an extent, but they've definitely like looked a lot better now that I've gotten more into like skincare and uh, sunscreen. <laughs> Uh, but I remember really liking that back when I first started using makeup because it, I don't know, I felt like, I felt like all those extra steps really made me, like, feel like I was doing something really technical. I was, like, learning. It was something brand new I had to learn, too. But at the end of the day, to be honest, I don't think it really made that much of a difference. And it was really just another layer, just that I did not need. It was kind of cakey at times. So I am glad that I moved away from that for the most part. Every now and then I will still color correct a little bit under my eyes, but nowhere near like the full, you know, diagram of what you should quote unquote color correct your face. <laughs> Question number five is what is a makeup trend that you used to hate, but now you love? And I will say heavy blush. Like today I'm wearing pretty heavy blush, but I love this blush shade and I just wanted to go everywhere. I used to not even wear blush at all. I didn't even really wear blush until like I got a job at Sephora. <laughs> I, yeah, I just I'll, I would I would contour, I would highlight, uh, but I, I would not touch blush with a 10 foot pole. And it's because I struggled with redness and I would get redness right here. And I would also always be told and you would see online that blush makes your face look round. Uh, it makes your face look plump. And I'm I've got a little bit of double chin. I don't like the plumpness of my face. <laughs> so I, I stayed far away. I was like, I don't want that. Um, but once I got that job at Sephora, I was actually during my interview, we talked about blush and they were like, you got, you should go for like a salmon or a peach blush. It would look really good on you. And I had that moment. I was like, I can use blush that's not pink. <laughs> and then a whole world opened up. And now I love peach and orange, just different blush tones. And it looks really nice and I really like it. So um, I've even done looks where it's like a really blush heavy, like all over the face. And I, I wouldn't have done that years ago and I love it now, so. I'm glad I finally got out of my comfort zone enough to try that. Question number six is, what is your favorite step in your makeup routine? I I really love the whole like process of me sitting down in the mornings and just taking my time and watching some YouTube or listening to a podcast and doing my makeup. If I had to pick a favorite step, I think my favorite step would be eyeshadow. I just have so much fun doing my eyeshadow every day. I love it. It doesn't matter what I'm doing, what palette I'm using, what products I'm using. I think I really just love getting to change the shape of my eyes and everything every day because I can dramatically change how my eyes look every day and I love it. <laughs> Question number seven is what is a makeup product you can't live without? Hmm. To be honest I'd probably say eyeshadow just because I love eyeshadow and I don't know if I would do a full face of makeup. Like if I had to choose between doing just eyeshadow or doing a full face of makeup but no eyeshadow I would just do the eyeshadow. I don't like not doing eyeshadow. So I'd probably say eyeshadow. Question number eight is what sparked your love for makeup? So this one, it kind of came not really out of nowhere, but it did kind of come late for me. So I was like a total tomboy, like didn't even wear makeup, didn't touch it, really didn't do anything until I was like in my 20s. It wasn't until like I went to, so I went to boarding school for the last two years of high school. And then from there I went to college. And when I was in college, I actually got a job and I was working at a museum. And while I was there, I remember uh, there being discussions because all the other women who worked there would wear makeup every day. And I didn't, this was back when I didn't wear makeup at all. And I actually got like a talk from my coworkers and they were like, yeah, you know, it makes you look professional if you wear makeup. People won't really take you seriously if you don't like do put your best face forward, which is kind of BS, but unfortunately it is true in some places. So I got worried and I was like, oh, I need to start wearing makeup. And so I started wearing like some really basic like concealer, some eyeshadow, but my heart wasn't really into it. Um, I started watching tutorials back then and I got really good at liner. I loved winged eyeliner. You can ask my friends from back then. I think I had a winged eyeliner every day just because I, I loved winged eyeliner. I just loved how that looked on me. But it wasn't until a couple years later when I finished school and I moved back up here to Jersey where I had my first full-time job 
and I would go to work, I would work a full day, I would come home, and it was that weird, like, mid-twenties time when, like, it's the first time where you have a full-time job and you don't have, like, homework. You're not in school anymore. So once you leave work, you can leave work at work, and then you just kind of have the rest of your life to do what you want. That's when I was like, I need hobbies. <laughs> and so that's when I really got into like the artistry of makeup. I started watching makeup YouTube like a lot. I was getting into um, like tutorials and I was really fascinated specifically with just eyeshadow and like just the, the amazing things you could do with eyeshadow. And that's how I kind of got into it. And here we are five years, six years, six years later, because I got I got into makeup like that. It was 2015 when I really got into makeup. And now I love it. <laughs> Question number nine is, what is the worst makeup look you've ever done? Now, I, of course, I don't have pictures of it because I wouldn't take it. But I think when I first started doing makeup and I really didn't, like, feel comfortable doing a full face of makeup to go to work. Because I would test out a lot of this at the bookstore that I used to work at, my first full-time job. And um, I remember there were days where I would do, like, just my eyebrows or I would do just foundation and, like, a little bit of contour but not too much because I didn't... So there were, I'm sure there were days where I looked crazy going to work there because I was testing out something new or the foundation wouldn't last all day. I think those are the worst when it was, like, summer and I had to wear... Where I didn't have to wear, but I wore makeup to work and I ended up working a 12-hour shift. And at the end of the day, I just, like, melted completely and I looked bananas I was like oh my god what's going on so I'm sure that there have been many a bad makeup day and there still are some bad makeup days too you know there are some days where like I do my eye like I do my eyeshadow before I go to go to work go to work across the room at my other desk and um I just like <laughs> I finished doing my makeup and I'm like I hate my eyeshadow today that that came out patchy that looks like trash there are just some days where it's still it's it's not perfect it's not gonna be 100% like awesome all the time and I say awesome because I did my eyes today and I love this look like mm, mm. so it's not always like this <laughs> question number 10 is what is your favorite makeup look you've ever done so I think this would go hand in hand with me like getting better to at actually taking photos of my makeup because if you haven't tried it, it's actually really difficult to like take photos of specifically like your makeup. If you're not just trying to get like a decent photo of you trying to focus on like eyeliner or like just anything like specifically on your face, it's difficult. <laughs> so for the first few years that I was doing makeup, it was so tough, especially especially before I got this camera. This camera, I have a Canon G7X. This helps a ton with taking decent photos of my actual makeup. Um, so that was a process in and of itself but I think one of my favorite makeup looks ever was back when I was um, doing the HP project pan I think this was in 2019 I was working with the Natasha Denona the big green brown palette a couple of loose shadows from geek chic cosmetics and I think there's a liner in here but this like green look I love this look I think this looks fantastic and also this is one of the first times where like I got a really good picture of my eye makeup and my whole face like together like I can zoom in and see the details of the eye makeup but the picture itself still looks really good um, and that was the, one of the first times I was playing around with this camera actually taking just regular photos with it so I love this look I think it's fantastic I posted it to Instagram <laughs> Question number 11 is, what is your favorite drugstore makeup product? Now, this, I think about this for a, a long time because I love so many good affordable drugstore products, but there is one product that I love. I've loved for years. I've repurchased a few times and I think it works well for just about anyone. So anyone can pick this up and I think they would love it or I hope they would love it as much as I do. And that is the Wet n Wild Liquid Cat Suit in Rebel Rose. I love this tone. Let's go ahead and give it a little swatch. This is like the perfect mauve for I would say the majority of skin tones. It's just it's beautiful. It's beautiful. I love the formula of this too and don't get me wrong. Wet n Wild can be hit or miss with their lipstick formula. Some of these shades are trash. Some of them are really, really good. This one, I think, is their best one. And I've tried a decent amount of their Liquid Catsuit lipsticks. It's just so beautiful and comfortable, and it looks amazing, and it wears amazing. Ah, I love this liquid lipstick, and I need to pull it back out and use it some more. But I, I honestly, I love this the best, like, in the fall, because I think it's, like, a perfect fall lip. Ah. But I just, I also love fall and I romanticize the hell out of fall because I love it. <laughs> but I have to say, I think this is my favorite drugstore product of all time. Question number 12 is, what is your favorite splurge makeup product? Again, I thought about this one for a while and I thought about what is a product that's either luxury or expensive, but that I think is 100% worth the price. And then I would personally go out and purchase again. 
So I had no other choice but to pick these. These are the Chromium Liquid Shadows from Natasha Denona. They are expensive. They are $28 each, but I think they're worth every penny. They are amazing. They, I bought all five shades. I wish they would keep these permanent because I think technically these are also limited edition. Don't make these limited edition. Make them permanent, please. I am wearing the shade uh, Ultraviolet on my lid today. They're beautiful. These are one of the only liquid shadows or shadows in general where I do not need to prime my lids. I have heavily hooded lids, so I almost always prime. I can wear these without a primer and they last all day and they look amazing. That right there would be enough to justify the price point for me, but these are beautiful. They wear amazing. They oh, just, I love them so much. And so I bought all five. I'm actually probably, if they're still available, going to pick up another one of the neutral shade, which is, I believe, ultra nude, infra nude, my bad. So infra nude, because this one's just about dried out because I used it so much, literally. I love this. This is my favorite way to get a quick five minute makeup look. You can literally just throw one of these all over your lid, do a little bit of a darker shadow to deepen up the outer V and then you're done and you look amazing. It looks like you spent an hour on your makeup, but you spent five minutes on your makeup. It's amazing. I love these. I love these so much. I think they're worth the price. If you are able to splurge, I would suggest picking up one or a couple of these. Question number 13 is, what is your most repurchased makeup product? And I made myself a three-way tie here because, to be quite honest, I don't know which one I buy the most. But I do think the, probably the number one is the Essence Lash Princess False Last Effect Mascara because you have to get a new mascara every three months. I don't know how many times I've bought this, but I bought it a lot. I love it to death. It's one of the best mascaras hands down drugstore higher end luxury that i've ever tried so this is my go-to whenever i need a good go-to mascara i just go to this the other two products that i think i've repurchased the most are just pressed powders and they're both um from the drugstore the first one is the shop miss a aoa studio perfect pressed finishing powder i've gone through quite a few of these these are literally only a dollar and they're amazing i love them for setting my entire face they're great the other pressed powder that I love from the drugstore is the Rimmel Stay Matte Powder. This can go up to like three or four dollars, but I actually find them on sale a lot in my area, so you can get them for one to three dollars, which is best. Um, but I go through these quite a lot, and I also go through the AOA powder quite a lot. Question number 14 is, what is your earliest makeup memory? And I'm going to cheat a little bit, and I'm going to go back to the eyeliner story that I told earlier, because I'm pretty sure like that's the earliest that I was ever interested in ever did makeup question number 15 is what is your favorite place to shop for makeup so i really like online shopping <laughs> i like shop miss a because they're affordable and you can get a lot of stuff all in one place sephora definitely less since the pandemic um but i did use to shop at sephora for the majority of my makeup purchases i'm trying to get more into ulta because ulta has the better rewards program and you get cash back and ulta also has more variety of like also like body care things whatnot so i'm trying to shop more at ulta but i think my number one would be right now probably uh shop miss a question number 16 is what is the most underrated makeup product you own i immediately went to loose blush because um i know liquid blush is having a moment which i do also love liquid blush but i feel like loose blushes i don't know if they ever had a moment at least in recent memory but i've been loving loose blushes and i'm wearing one of the loose blushes today but specifically i wanted to call out these loose blushes from crow and pebble crow and pebble is a indie brand based out of the uk and their products i have to say are priced like they're priced so well especially for someone who's buying internationally like for me it was worth it to buy the products because they were affordable um and then the shipping i think after a certain amount it's either free shipping or it was really cheap shipping and i live in the u.s so getting it shipped from the uk to here it normally is expensive and normally i don't buy from brands based in europe just because the pricing and the, but the pricing and the shipping is just too much together uh but this brand just really really reasonable with their pricing um, on top of that the products are amazing you get a ton of product in these loose blushes and my favorites i'm gonna go ahead and call out the shade that i'm wearing today is torch of heaven she who shakes the sky which is this beautiful like peach shade which i have all over my cheeks i love this one to death um i also love this mauve shade this oh beautiful it's almost it almost matches the rebel rose shade actually that'd be really really pretty to do a look with just this and then rebel rose but this shade is friend of flowers she who keeps love hidden 
I gotta say the names are a little bit long but I, I love the blushes and they're really really great quality I love everything about them they also come packaged really well so that nothing breaks or spills during shipping I did do a full video testing out all of my crow and pebble products I'll throw the video up in the cards but I do think that loose blushes in general are a bit underrated but specifically this brand I think crow and pebble loose blushes are underrated and I love them and I'll take any opportunity I can to talk about them Question number 17 is, what is the most overrated makeup product you own? And again, we have a tie. Uh, first one, this is Charlotte Tilbury. I have to say, I'm glad I tried out the smaller quads from Charlotte Tilbury. Whew, they're not worth it. They are not worth it. These are kind of trash. <laughs> and I've tried them both the way that I would normally use eyeshadow. And then I actually went and followed Charlotte's directions for how you should use the eyeshadows with no primer whatsoever. They were less trash, but they were still bad, especially for the price point. So I think anything Charlotte Tilbury eyeshadow related is overrated. <laughs> to the point where I'm not gonna be buying any more eyeshadow from Charlotte Tilbury. And I'm pretty sure I'm gonna sell this one. I bought two of the quads. The green quad, at least I can get a decent look out of. And so I think I'm gonna keep that one. But this one I'm gonna sell on my Poshmark at some point. I think after I do my next big declutter, because honestly it wasn't worth it and I want to get, sell it. <laughs> Next is a holiday release from a brand and I got this because people were saying like oh if you want to try a cheaper version of this brand's you know formula try out this holiday palette and it'll work just as well as the big you know the bigger normal palettes but now that I've tried a big palette I can tell the difference in the formula and the holiday palette is not as good. This is from Pat McGrath and this is the Sublime Bronze Temptation eyeshadow palette. This was a holiday palette and while the shades are really pretty I have to say not this palette was not worth the money I had to pay for it even just to try out Pat McGrath's formula because like I said I now have a full-size Pat McGrath palette after that, that was my big splurge during the, the last Sephora sale. Um, these are very different than the shades that I have in that full size palette. So personally, mm, yeah, I wish I had just gone with the big palette from the start just to try out. You know, I'd rather have one big Pat McGrath palette than having bought this and thinking, oh wow, they're not really that great. And then going to buy a bigger palette and realizing that it's actually really good, but this one's just not that great. Again, this might be one that I sell, I'm not sure, but yeah. Question number 18 is, what are the discontinued makeup product you wish would come back? Now this, I don't know if it's discontinued. I really hope it's not, but if it is, oh my God, I hope it comes back. It's the CoverGirl Vitalist Healthy Elixir Foundation. This was one of the big foundations when I first started my YouTube channel, and I'm pretty sure I used it in one of the first videos I ever posted to this channel about a summer foundation routine, but I loved that foundation. And I went through quite a few bottles of it, like completely panned, scraped it out, got everything out. I recently, like, I was thinking of going back to like earlier videos on my channel and trying to like redo them now that I'm a bit more established. I could not find that foundation anywhere. And I was so sad. I looked online. I looked in every local store that carried CoverGirl. I can't find that foundation. I really hope they're just repackaging it or something, but I can't find it. And I'm really sad. So if, if anyone knows about that foundation, if, if you've heard that it's being discontinued or where you can buy it now, please let me know because I miss it. Question number 19 is where do you go for makeup inspiration? Um, hmm. I mean, it's a good mix. I like to go to Tumblr. I just, I've got a really old Tumblr. I'm not really gonna share it because it's old. It's really aesthetic. It's really just like, oh, cute pictures of books. But I like seeing photos there. It's not just pictures of makeup, but just like any kind of photos I see there. Um, I really like Instagram. I get inspired by people that I see on Instagram and then YouTube. I really get inspired a lot from YouTube, especially people, especially just with how creative people can be on YouTube. And I just, I love seeing, you know, inspiration for video ideas, but also inspiration for makeup. So that's, those are the main places that I tend to go. <laughs> Question number 20 is, what do you hope to see less of in makeup's future? To be quite honest, I would like to see less makeup releases. I would rather have less releases uh, but to have them be like better curated, better thought out products, then get a new product every week. To be to be f frankly honest, I'm sick of all the new releases because at this point there's there's no thought getting put into like anything anymore. And that's really sad to see. Anything else I want to see less of? I don't want to talk about like drama because I really isn't like makeup community's fault in general. It's like the people that are at the forefront of the makeup community on YouTube. So I won't touch on that, but I think the bigger problem is going to be the constant releases that are happening and whether or not like the actual like makeup bubble is going to burst. 
Question number 21 is, what do you hope to see more of in makeup's future? I'd like to see more, more creativity, more inspiration. And my personal favorite, I'd like to see more green eyeshadows, more creative green eyeshadow palettes in the mainstream. But that's, but that's just me. <laughs> Ooh, so we did it. That was all 21 questions. Oh, I had a lot of fun doing this tag. It really, it really made me like think and slow down and go through my collection and also just go through like my history with makeup. And I had a lot of fun doing it. If you're interested in doing this tag, please do and let me know either here or on my Instagram when you do this tag because I love to watch you guys do those videos. You can either do this as a video or as an Instagram post either. So don't feel pressured if, if you want to do the tag but you don't want to make a video. Thank you guys so much for watching and I cannot wait to see you in my next video. Bye.